Hey, hey, Hen House Crafters. So happy to see you again. If uh, you're new to my videos, then I would like to let you know that I am Sandra Fellers of Hen House Crafters, and I'm super happy that you're here. Um, all of my new watchers as well as returning watchers, we have a fun little, um, well, it's called Cottontail Farms. So it's a little bunny project that um, doesn't necessarily have to be Easter, but um, I do think it's kind of a spring project. So I thought it would be a whole lot of fun to um, do. And we're gonna add some embellishments like um, flowers and ribbon um, and uh, you know greenery to um, just enhance this project a little bit. And um, so I've got all kinds of goodies down here on my desk that you can't see yet. But what I'm going to try to do is turn my camera down so you can see what I'm working on. And we can do this together step by step. If you're not already in my Hen House Crafting Club, just leave me a comment down below and I will get you a link so that you can get in there. It's completely free and it is the place where I um, do my live videos like this. Um, share my projects um, that I'm working on and I really encourage that all of you do the same. Um, I love seeing what kind of projects you guys are working on and how everybody can just share and inspire each other. Um, so let's get crafting people. Okay, so get this all set up so that hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So here's some of the supplies that I have ready for us today. We're going to be using Chalkology paste. Um, I've got several different colors to work with. Um, this is a uh, chalk, so um, it does wash off with just water, and um, which makes it really nice because um, you know if you mess up, you can just wash it right off. So um, it takes a little bit of the the scaredness out of doing a craft project. So we're going to be using Chalkology paste. We've got some ribbon. So this ribbon is a wired ribbon and it is, let's see, I got it from Amazon. It's called Chicken Wire Canvas Gray and White. It's two and a half inches wide which is um, a little too big to make a bow for the project um, that we have going today. So what I did is I cut it in half. So now um, I have two strips of a little bit smaller ribbon and it has the wire just on one side. So I think this is gonna be a better size for this project that we're working on today. So I went ahead and got that ready for us. And then I have some little uh, pink flowers and leaves and greenery that I had left over from another project that I think will be um, super cute um, in this project and with our ribbon that we have. Move that out of the way. The transfer that we're using, this is a chalk couture transfer. It's called Cottontail Farms. And um, it comes with this super detailed and super cute bunny. Um, a two-part carrot, so you would have, for example, if you did orange, you would have um, one color of orange and then you'd have the details in another color of orange. Just gives it a little extra detail. Um, some cute little flowers. And then down here, um, you have the words Cottontail Farms. And you can even use the words Established 2020. Um, I was thinking about not using that part. I don't know why. I just didn't kind of um, fit the picture of what I had in mind. So I thought we would skip that part. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and open this up. Oh, and I, I didn't mention the board. Okay, so the board that we're using, this is a chalk board from Chalk Couture. 
and uh, it doesn't have the name on the back of this one. I have to look it up for you guys. But it's a pretty good size board. Let's see here. So the chalkboard itself is, that's 18 inches that way and about 12 inches this way. So it's a 12 by 18 board. And then it has this really nice white frame um, that is super cool. It has on the back, um, let's see if I can get it so you can see it. It has hangers on uh, two different sides so that you can pick which way you want to hang it. Um, I've had it hanging with some of these 3M, um, what are they called? I can't remember what these things are called. Um, it has Velcro on there, and so you put one on the wall and one on the back of your picture, and then you just push them together and it Velcros. And then if you want to take it off your wall or off of your picture, you just pull this and it releases it without leaving any marks or holes or anything. Um, command strips, that's what it's called. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Okay, so it's command strips. So, to get started, I'm going to use my transfer trimmers. Um, these are also from Chalk Couture, and they are um, obviously scissors, but they are coated to um, cut sticky things and not get sticky. You know, if you use um, a pair of scissors to cut tape and things like that, after a while you get all that sticky gets stuck on your blades and then it doesn't want to cut good. Well, the coating on these scissors is made to um, kind of repel that. So they should not get sticky. Your um, transfers come with these little cut lines. I don't know if you can see some of them. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut along each one of those lines to get our transfer ready to go. And by cutting these apart, it really makes it to where you can um, personalize this design and make it however you want. It doesn't have to be laid out um, the way they had it laid out here on the transfer. You can put the carrots at the top, at the bottom, on the side, all over the place. You could do multiple carrots, um, you know, and the flowers and stuff. Or if you want to omit something and you don't want to use it at all, you can do that. Um, but you can really make this design your own that way as well as by choosing your own colors. Um, you can pick any colors that you like and use them. You certainly don't have to use the colors that I'm working with today. Okay. So we have all of our pieces cut out. So I'm gonna put those away and move these aside so with our board what i was thinking make sure i have it the right way okay so what i was thinking is maybe i would put the rabbit a little closer to the bottom that way at the top i can add um the flowers and the bow and um so that would if i leave some empty space up there then my bow won't cover up my design so that's what we're gonna plan on doing today. I'm just gonna remove this first transfer from the backing paper. So your backing paper has a super slick shiny side here that um, your transfer should stick to. The back side is not as slick and shiny and it if you put your transfer on the back of there, it's liable to get stuck and you'll have a hard time peeling it off. So when you're um, done with your transfers, they're all cleaned up and ready to store away, you wanna make sure to put them on this shiny side. So this cloth is called a fuzzing cloth. This is a terry cloth side. We're gonna use it to literally put the sticky side of our transfer on and add some fuzz to so that it's not too sticky 
um, so that when we remove it from our board, it could, if it's too sticky, it could be hard to remove for one. Um, it could be hard to place because it keeps grabbing your board before you can get it where you want it. Or you could um, tear or stretch your transfer. So we want to fuzz it a bit. So I like to just lift it up and put it back down a couple of times to get some fuzz on the back. And then we're ready to place it on the board. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put this one all the way down at the bottom. I'm going to attempt to center it um, because I want to add my bow and flowers up at the top. And um, I want to leave an empty space for that. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to smooth down the edges, making sure that um, around the outside of our transfer is stuck down nicely so that we can get a nice crisp design. So if you've never used Chalk Couture before, this is um, called a transfer and not a stencil because the dark areas where you're seeing the board through is not actually empty space. Um, there is a screen in there, so it's more like a uh, screen printing process. All right, so I was thinking about using the grayish for um, our bunny rabbit. So let me get a little squeegee and a um, stir stick. You always want to make sure to stir your chalk paste before using it because you want to make sure that the pigments are mixed nicely and that you have a nice consistency because um, if you have a yogurt-like consistency, it's gonna go on smoother and um, when you lift it up, you're gonna have a nicer finish. So this one is perfect. It's like stirring a little cup of yogurt. And if it's a little bit too thick, or even a lot thick, you can add um, just a squirt or two of distilled water, and then just stir, 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 stir it up really, really good, and it should loosen up and still be usable product. And I say distilled water because if you use um, just tap water or something like that, um, it has some bacteria in it, and so what can happen is when you're done, you put the lid on it and you store it away. The next time you go to open it, that bacteria has grown in your jar, and you'll find that you have mold in your jar. So that's why you should use um, distilled water. So, a little piece of fuzz on our rabbit. So I'm just going to load up um, my small squeegee with the grayish chalk paste and glide it over our bunny. Trying not to get it on the outside area of the transfer, but if it does, it's not a huge deal because it is just chalk and it will wash off. So now I am just gliding the chalk paste over the entire screened area, not pushing too hard. And what I'm going to do is, as soon as I get this covered, I'm going to go back. I'm going to lift up my squeegee more at a 90 degree angle. See, I've been using it like this, so I'm going to stand it up a little bit like this. And I'm going to start removing the excess paste and place it back in the jar so we don't have to waste it. So these jars will last a pretty good while because it only takes a little bit and you can always put the excess back in the jar. Unless you're mixing colors. If you're doing some of the techniques where you're using multiple colors and mixing them together, then you would definitely not want to put that back in your jar. Okay, so that looks good. Move this aside and reveal our little cottontail bunny. There. Isn't he sweet? 
Have you ever had a bunny as a pet? My daughter had um, three of them growing up and um, unfortunately none of them lasted very long, but they are super sweet pets to have. Just not a good combination when you have a big dog. I think, um, bunnies, I think, have kind of a weak heart, and so they get scared really easily, and they can actually die. Okay, I'm going to get my hair dryer and give this a little bit of a dry on a warm setting so that um, when we go to lay the next transfer down, we don't mess up what we just finished. So it, please pardon the noise for a few seconds. design is dry when it goes from a semi-gloss to a matte finish and you can rub over it and it will not smudge like your typical um, sticks of chalk that you use on chalkboards so you don't have to worry about any smudging. Okay so next I think we're going to add the words Cottontail Farms and I know it's backwards for you guys but that's because my phone is in selfie mode I do apologize for that but it makes it a lot easier for me to see if anybody's commenting or asking questions. So let's see, we've got these carrots and flowers to use also. So I gotta figure out how I wanna place all of this. So once again, I do want to leave some empty space up at the top for our bow and flowers. So I'm bringing this down a bit. Maybe like so. And then, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this carrot. Maybe I'll put it underneath. Would that be cute? Just put it underneath like this. And then we have these flowers that I thought I would do something like this down at the bottom. And then with our flowers and bow at the top. So, um, the Cottontail Farms, I want to do in white, so I am going to move these out of the way and get my white. I already stirred up my white before starting this video, so it is good to go. too much. Put that back in the jar. So now I'm just going to stand up my squeegee to remove the excess. Place it back in the jar. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Move this aside. Oops, I've got some on my finger. I'm trying not to make a mess. Okay, so let's lift this. Now you want to lift from one side and not a corner, and that's going to help prevent stretching. There we go. That turned out nice. All right, so once again, I'm gonna use the hair dryer really quick to dry that, and then we'll place our carrot and flowers. Okay, 
So our carrot is a two-part carrot. Um, so you have part one. Can you see? It says one and two. So we're going to start with part one, obviously. So the second part is just going to add some detail to the carrot. So we're going to use part one. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up right underneath the farms here. Like that. And you have these little tiny register marks. Can you see them? So that is to help you line it up um, when you get ready to put part two on. But um, I'm not going to use them. And all you do is you, you fill them in with chalk. That way when you lift this up, they're there and you can see them when you go to put this on. And then you just have to wash them off. But um, I guess I'm going to be a rebel. I'm not going to use them. <laughs> but if you have difficulty lining up the two-part transfers, it is an excellent tool. So for part one, I'm going to use guava. And then for part two, I'm going to use a darker orange, which is papaya. And um, that's going to add the details. You could, um, for the details, you could use black or white or gray, anything that you want. I just thought it might be fun to have um, two orange colors um, rather than, um, well, I don't want to use black because my board is black, but I could have used white. Okay. So let's see here. Stir this up. Okay, nice and stirred up. So, throw my little stir stick aside. For this one, I'm going to use the little mini squeegee. So you can see the difference. We have the small squeegee and the mini squeegee. So this one is just going to fit a little nicer on this transfer and not have to worry about it running off the edges. So I'm going to use the smaller one with the guava. Just kind of a coral orange. I guess. It doesn't take much. So now I'm standing up my squeegee to remove the excess. Dropped one little bit right there. Okay. Let's remove this piece. And reveal part one. So you could leave it like that if you were happy with that um, or did, just didn't want to try to attempt the part two, but um, adding a second layer really is not hard at all. You just want to make sure that your first layer is dry and then you want to not press too hard when you're doing that second layer and not leave the second layer on. Like don't stop and start talking to somebody and then come back and pull it off because what's going to happen is you're going to pull off some of the first layer as well. So you'll, you want to work um, kind of quickly when you're doing that. So let's open up the papaya. This one's kind of thick, so I'm going to add um, a, just a spritz of water. That's all that's in here is distilled water. And stir it up. Okay. I'm just
just making sure to mix it up really well. I'm getting low on this one. I need to replace this one. Get a new one. Not a whole lot to stir around in there. But thankfully, we don't need very much for this little carrot. So we're going to give it a go, see if we can make it work. All right, again, using the mini squeegee and some of this darker orange. We're going to add part two here. And I can see the orange through my transfer, so that's helping me line it up here. Right about there is good. Okay. So now I'm just going to gently add that second layer, which does not take much at all. Okay. Make sure my hands are clean. And there we go. I don't know if y'all can see it on the camera. It just adds a little bit of dimension to the carriage. Okay. Make sure this area is clean for our flowers. Put one there, and I'm going to add one to the other side. And I'm just lining them both up at the bottom, just like I did the rabbit. So I think I'm going to come back with the white to bring in some white down at the bottom. And I'm dropping my transfers in a pan of water over here just so that the um, chalk doesn't dry in the screen while I'm working. Um, because I don't have a sink in here to wash them out right away. So I'll just leave them in that pan of water until I'm finished with my live and then I'll take them to the sink and wash them out. Okay, so let's remove the excess here. Perfect. All right, so now we have our flowers down at the bottom. 
We are ready to start putting together our bow and flowers for the top. So, move all of that aside. Go ahead and do a quick dry on this so that I don't mess it up while I'm working on these flowers. something like some flowers over here and some flowers over here and then maybe a bow in the middle. So I've got my um, chicken wire ribbon that I cut in half. If you missed the beginning of the video, it's a two and a half inch ribbon and I cut it in half. So I am going to get a couple of little bundles together, some greenery and some flowers. And then I have this little um, Chanel stem, or some people call them pipe cleaners, and I'm going to use that to attach the pieces together. So, let's just get these ends kind of close together so that I can attach them. something like that. So I'm just overlapping it in the center a little bit. I don't know if you can see. And then I'm going to use this stem to wrap around and secure like that. And then on the back side, turn it over. I'm just going to twist these together to hold it in place. And then I have some little wire cutters here. I'm just snipping off those ends. Get that one. Perfect. Okay, so now we have two little bundles of flowers that are attached in the center. And I'm not worried about this Chanel stem being in a different color or showing because that's where our bow is gonna sit and it's gonna hide that. So, oops, this one's not in there. Let's stick it in. There we go. And we can fluff these and twist these once we get our bow and everything on here so that it all faces the front like we want. So now I'm going to attempt to make a bow. So let's see. I think I'm going to tie them together at once. Get my two pieces together. So there's a wired edge on each one of them because it was together like this and I cut it in half. So there's a wire over here and a wire over here. Um, so I'm going to put them in opposite directions, and then I'm just going to tie a bow around the flowers. So I'm going to stick this underneath here, and then tie, just like you would tie your shoes. And then once we get it tied nicely, the wired... Oops, just pulled it apart. The uh, wired ribbon is going to allow us to fluff our bow nicely. Make sure that guy's in there. Okay, so I'm just going to tie that tight. And then we got to make our little loops. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing okay here, but I think everybody knows how to tie their shoes. Okay, pull my other loop through and tie it tight. Once we get it tied, we can rearrange all of these like we want them. So I can 
pull out each of those little pieces. Make this one a little bit shorter. Twist it and fluff it. So the wire, I'm just using it to make it a little rounder on the edges to make it look fluffy. And then these little doodads, streamers down at the bottom, I'm going to try and twist and place them so that they look nice. down there and then I might need to trim them a little bit so that they don't cover up our design. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. So I'm going to put this up at the very bottom. Move this down so you can see at the bottom of the frame here. Let me uh, plug in my glue gun really quick. And I'm going to use hot glue just because um, I change this board out pretty frequently and I want to be able to easily remove it. And the hot glue, once it dries, um, if you want to remove it, you could just pull it off and then scrape off the hot glue and you're good to go. You can change out your board with different uh, bow or, or whatever it is um, that you want to do. Fluff up some of our leaves so that they look nice. Okay. So, um, can you see here how some of my ribbons are covering up my lettering? So I'm just going to go and trim those off. Now it's kind of hard for you to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to trim them just above my words so that um, you can read it. Like that. So just those long ones in the center, I think, were too much. I think these outer ones are going to be just fine. All right. The roses I got from uh, Hobby Lobby and uh, the greenery, and then the ribbon came from uh, Amazon. So, there we go. All right, so now I'm just gonna add some glue to the back um, where the ribbon is, and I'm literally just gonna stick it down on the frame. Oh, I have to stick that thing back in there too. So I am just gonna my glue is hot. It's not quite hot yet. It doesn't want to come out. Stick it on there. This bad boy back in here that fell out. Okay, so my glue gun did not heat up fast enough for me, but I'm going to lift up my camera so you can see the finished project here. a sneak peek of the other side of the room that's a mess. So what I'm going to do is glue it right up here. What do you think? Did it turn out cute? 
I'm not in love with the um, the orange carrot. I might go back and redo it in uh, white or gray. But I think the rest of it turned out really cute. I'm dropping the bow. I think the rest of it is really cute. So cottontail forms with our little cottontail bunny and just added a bow and flowers. Can you see that better? To the top, just that just really dresses it up and makes it look nice. And you could use any flowers that you like. Um, of course, and any ribbon that you like and stuff like that. So I'll get this glued on here um, and set it up and take a nice still picture and post it for you guys so that you can see the finished project. But thanks so much for joining me again. I really do appreciate when you guys come in and um, give me your advice and tell me what you think about how it's turning out um, and uh, how you think I should arrange things. So it's been really fun. I appreciate it. Everybody have a wonderful Sunday, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.